In today's video, how long should you rest between sets? Hey you guys, what's going on? It's Paul Ravella and Stephen Bogrand. We're back with Science with Stephen. Science with Steve. So why is it Science with Steve? Well, because he's got his master's degree in exercise science. Hey. And I can think of no better reason to hang out with my man here. So what we're going to talk about today, the science of how long should you rest between sets. Shorter, longer. And we're going to talk about a couple studies that we've come across. And we're going to talk about some other factors that might influence your training. So Steve, in your experience, what is more important? Rest or short rest or long rest or what, what are we going for here? So in my experience, and I think that what the research will show is yep. that when you take longer rest periods, you can recover better in between sets, therefore getting more volume throughout a workout. So what is volume? Volume is simply your reps times your weights times your sets. So it is the accumulated work that you are doing throughout each workout. Yeah, so if you think about volume as the total amount of weight you lifted, it makes sense because if you rest less, for those of us that have been in the gym and you only rest 30 or 60 seconds between sets, you don't recover as much, you can't lift as much weight. So you might do as many sets and reps, but you might not do as much weight. Correct. So what studies did we find on this? So the big study that we found was by Schoenfield where he just looked at simple rest times. Yeah. Right? And so what we saw is shorter rest times. So what was the short time? The short time was one minute. Right. And the longer rest intervals were three minutes. Yes. Three minutes, that's the correct. Um, and so it was pretty straightforward in this study that we saw that three minutes had a much better benefit than one minute rest intervals. And the benefit that we saw was on not only muscle hypertrophy, but muscle endurance as well. Correct. Yeah, so. <laughs> Cheers, Merka. <sighs> Gotta pay the bills. The lights on. No. Tastes like a rainbow full of stars and stripes and freedom. Tastes like sticks inviting you up to shred a nasty guitar solo right in the middle of the set. All right guys, so this is the new energy drink by America Labs. I'm gonna put a, a locator below, a link so that you can find where to buy them because they're, they're sold by Muscle Foods USA and a few other distributors. Um, or you can just order them online at AmericaEnergy.com. But Doug Miller started a new energy company because you know what? Just like supplements, he thought he could do it better. So cheers to you, Doug, because this tastes just like the delicious orange crush with 200 milligrams of caffeine and some choline. Uh, the metabolic stress from the shorter rest periods might actually lead to like what I was thinking, like more of like a conditioning type effect on the muscle, right. but it didn't. It actually showed that because you're getting more training volume right. with the longer rest. So what does that mean for us? Does that mean we should go into the gym every day and rest three minutes between sets? Well, I think that depends a lot on your lifestyle and how much time you have to devote to the yep. gym. Um, obviously, you know, if you're a very advanced and elite level power lifter, you're going to have to have longer rest periods in between sets. You're going to be working at heavier weights or higher intensities, um, and you need that time to sort of replenish Recover. the energy within yep. the muscle. Um, now, if you are a newer lifter and you're just sort of getting started, uh, you can probably get away with not having to put as much time in the sets because you're not going to have the time to put into it, right? This is just not really your life revolving around it, so... Well, not. also, beginning lifters don't have the workload capacity. Right. And they're going to respond to a much lower need for, like, volume to, in total. Correct. The, the newbie gains are, you know, they're kind of famous because you go in the gym and you hit a PR every week no matter what you do. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and something we talked about when we were studying at USF was... Um, Beginners don't really need like a periodized style of training program. They don't need to, they just need to right. they just need to go in and get the stimulus. It exactly. doesn't have to be perfected. Right. So I think the way I look at uh, rest between sets, it's a tool right. in our toolbox of training. So when we compete in powerlifting, you compete in powerlifting, I've competed in powerlifting, when we're doing training sets of 85, 90%, right. we're resting maybe 10 minutes between sets. Up to, absolutely. To like get our bodies and minds ready for that next set and it's, it's necessary rest when you're lifting that close to your one rep max. Yes. But being in the gym for three hours and doing 12 working sets right. can not be productive for everybody. So what's the other trend? Well, 
we also have like the hit style workouts right where you rest like 30 45 seconds and go non-stop and right. i've done that too when time was short yeah so what in my opinion the best is kind of blending that right absolutely so going in the gym lifting heavy um early in a set and then as you fatigue taking a little bit longer to rest now what are your thoughts on the fatigue like as, as a lifter the fatigue like intuition do you know when to lift again should you set a timer or should you just wait until you feel ready yeah and so this is a big one that i think training experience plays a huge yes. role in so if you're a beginner lifter and sometimes maybe even those intermediate level lifters i think that it makes more sense to have a timer um, that way you you're set and you're sort of getting used to those things you yes. know how you feel yes. you're learning how to pay attention to your body if you're a more advanced lifter I definitely 100% go on feel. I myself 100% go on feel like when I'm ready to lift again. Yeah, yeah. I think, like you said, that's something that you learn as an experienced lifter. And honestly, sometimes going in the gym as a beginner, you don't want to feel like you're doing nothing. Sometimes it can be awkward to, to do a set and sit there for a while. Yeah. So setting a timer, maybe taking a walk, getting a drink, having like a system so that you're moving through the workout briskly enough um, is, is effective. Whereas when we get to, I'll call myself advanced, um, you mm -hmm. know, been training over 20 years earned a pro card, competed many times. You know, I, I consider myself, I've put myself through enough training programs that I know myself very well. I will go in and rest according to when I feel ready to perform the next set, yep. knowing that that set is going to be of the highest quality that can be. Right. And pushing myself in that manner. Um, I can even tell by the deepness of my breath. Yep. I can tell by my last set if I didn't rest long enough. Mm -hmm. So these are tools that you, you experience through your training cycle. Again, as a beginner, you don't need as much training volume. Right. You don't need as many sets to progress. So you can rest a little bit less, yep. get in and out. And then you can also do things like whole body workouts. Right. Because you're not stuck doing 15 sets for, for your back or your chest to progress. Right. As you get more advanced, this is where we're going to need to see some things like supersets, right? Maybe drop sets, mm -hmm. ways to increase our volume in a shorter amount of time. Yeah. So, what else can we look for in training to optimize our, let's say, volume, intensity, and time techniques? What are some of the, the things that you've come across? So, obviously, we have simply just using a linear progression or you know a non-linear progression in terms of how we program. Uh, we have supersets. Yes. Uh, we can superset with the same muscle group. So, like say a bench press and then a tricep exercise. Okay. Uh, we can bench. A superset with opposing muscle groups, which would be something like a bench press and a bicep curl, right? Um, which is probably what I would recommend if you're going to use supersetting. Uh, you can do time under tension. The benefit there is you're not going to really impact the performance of one muscle over the other. Correct. Whereas if we're doing a, a chest and a tricep, you're going to be fatiguing both body parts at the same right. time. Yeah. Yep. Um, and so then your bench press volume is not negatively impacted by your tricep supersetting. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> And then there's time under tension. There's things like pause reps. Um, you can do banded work. So there's a million different things that you can do in terms of switching up your workout to get a stimulus that is going to, you know, help yeah. put on a little bit of extra work. Well, and, and so for you guys that are kind of new to this, and a lot of this sounds like um, it's too much or too much to intake, and you're not really getting answers you want. We've put together a few things. We've put together a free training guide. We've also put together a free flexible dieting guide. So this, since this is training, we'll talk about the training guide. This is a training guide for beginners. Everything from like gym selection, yep. exercise selection, some nutrition basics, a free basic workout program. If you're interested in that, I'll put the email below, email training at prophysique.com. We're just gonna send it to you free of charge just to get you started into the, into the gym lifestyle. Um, and then once you get to more advanced, you can start looking at things like periodization, yeah linear versus non-linear daily undulating these are some very advanced techniques um you know there's a lot of great training programs out there for people that have been training for a long time and uh, i just did a video on this topic and I, I think it's important to change up your training every so often to keep you kind of enjoying the process of learning because yeah. even now you and i will go through a new training program the first week or two is kind of like adapting yeah. Like figuring out, okay, if I need to do three sets of 12, what weight can I use for three sets of 12 and right. be successful? So it's always fun to be, be learning along the way. So if you guys are interested, the link will be below. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. I'm also going to link the study or the couple of studies that we, uh, we found on this topic. Again, the research is pretty clear. If you have the time to rest a little bit longer, lift a little bit heavier, the benefits, they're going to be there for you. Absolutely. If it's more about just getting in the gym and getting something done, 
Maybe you just have a little bit less rest time, use a little bit less weights, but you're still doing something positive. All right, guys, that's going to be it for Science with Steve. I'm Paul, and hope you guys are having an awesome Saturday, and we'll talk to you soon.